Hello, welcome to my F122 driver crew. I'm here today for part 5 for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix here in Baku and into qualifying then we must have been very good especially when we put it in the barrier at the first corner bringing out the red flag not a good start to the weekend but before we go to the race we have some issues with the engine we're going to go with a new gearbox and a new turbo because that was one after Monaco but let's get into the race. Second overtakes and a historic podium for Williams and Lance Stroll. Let's find out what lies in store for us this year. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. The Baku city circuit measures roughly six kilometers and is made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town, and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge, where the smallest of mistakes could lead to catastrophic consequence for any one of our drivers. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And starting next to them is George Russell. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Verstappen, Sergio Perez, and Norris, Bottas, Ricardo, Fernando Alonso, and Sebastian Vettel. Magnussen, Hamilton, they've taken a grid penalty. Pierre Gasly and Albon. Stroll, Mick Schumacher, Yuki Tsunoda, and Nicholas Latifi. Brown, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Guan Yu Zhou. Now it lights out just moments away. It's time to go down to the track. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat, Anthony Davidson. And our races are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching for as they go down into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve-wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start, and this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space, and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. So here we get into the race. I thought this try to be different. We're at the back. We might as well start on the hard. Just try and play the long game. If we have good pace, then chances may come later on. But as the fire lights went out, we are underway, and we in the background didn't really know where to go. Thought about the inside, but nothing there. Oh, there's Grand New Joe. And Nicholas Latifi just on the road losing out to a Vanessa Alpha Tower as we send it down the inside of Guan Yu into turn two. He gets the exit. Even though I've done the formation lap, these tires are still very, very cold. As you can see as they're weaving on the straight, trying to get some tire temperature as Joe and Latifi are side by side through the first sector. We're just here lingering, be like a bad smell, just trying to find the chance to get past them. They're still side by side. As we go towards the castle section, it looks like Joe, they just have got ahead. And he has. And now can we have a look at the TV? Unfortunately though, we just had no pace on these hard tyres. And this was pure pace. Struggling so much, we nearly pissed up behind the TV. This strategy was not a good idea, and it's backfiring massively. As on to lap 12 now, here are those in front, pissed up ahead, Albon and Lance Stroll, and they're pissed up clear of us, and it's not looking good in this race. As now Nicholas Latifi had eventually pulled a whole pit stop on us. And now around the first corner you can see us go there. We do come out just ahead of Latifi. But you know you're struggling when 
we're at pit stop behind Latifi. It's not going well as Azerbaijan Grand Prix. As he is on the back of us here now heading through the final S section and towards a massive, massive back straight. As he tries to overtake us to the outside, we do defend him. Is he going to be late on the brakes? Is he going to go to the outside? And we're going to force him the long, long way around. Squeeze him out and he stays ahead as we now pit. On lap 15. If we head down the pits now, completely mistimed it again, unfortunately. Now onto the medium tyres and... Out of the pits and now let's just hope that we have some pace or hope for a safety car or something. Looks like we might have an issue. Hang in there, we're attempting to manage it. No, we have an issue. And I was thinking that about retiring the car. But I was clinging on to hope that there was a safety car. But it doesn't look to be coming. Okay, we have a severe engine issue. Find a safe space to retire or return to the pits. And we're out of the Bad Majan Grand Prix. It must have been the most boring Grand Prix I've ever done. The 19 laps on my own. And we're out of the Grand Prix. Our first mechanical failure of the career mode. Here's our winner pulling their Ferrari into Park Ferme then. What a fantastic race. Talk to me Ant. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit, familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. So Leclerc got himself back to winning ways after that, after Monaco, and we've of course retired. So is Sebastian Vettel. We seem to be on this path of scoring, not scoring. Hopefully we can score next time out in Canada. Alonso carried us completely. Here's the constructors. But I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a short one. Back in maybe a bit more dramatic. Fortunately not. We've got Canada next. My favourite Grand Prix. And I hope to see you then. Goodbye.